Back in the summer of 1992, I bought my first issue of X-Men Comics, and it changed my life. And the X-Men are still a vital part to my life as of today. It was the summer of 1995, a year after I graduated high school, and I didn't go to college. I really wanted to get into acting, and my mom frowned upon that, and said I should have something to fall back on. And there was really nothing at the time that I wanted to do other than act. And so I was kind of lost and I decided to audition for the Kalamazoo Civic Theater, their summer program for that year. And I got to be a part of two shows. Uh, one being the musical version of Two Gentlemen of Verona, and also The King and I, which is one of my favorite musicals of all time. And it was a rewarding experience. I had so much fun, and it, it just, it was great. And I met queer people. And they were cool and popular and I started thinking to myself, why don't I come out? And so I did. I came out as a cisgender gay man. And That was groundbreaking on so many levels. It still didn't curb my femininity. Um, I embraced it a little bit more. But as far as being trans, I, I was nowhere near ready for that step. And as soon as I turned 21, I was able to go to the local gay bar. And you have to keep in mind, this is the mid to late 90s, and gay bars were not a safe place. It was kind of like this taboo thing that you do, and you only talk about it with like-minded friends. Um, strange how the times have changed um, in a good way. So I began dating men and I would also travel. Um, I went to New York City. I also got to go to Walt Disney World. And then eventually I met Michael. And he was a theater student at the local university. And we embarked on a magnificent affair. Uh, he would eventually become my first love. And it, it, it was somewhat doomed from the start, to, to put it lightly, because as soon as he graduated college, he was going to do post-grad in another state. 
So I knew that this was only going to be temporary, but still my heart went full in and, and Michael and I are still friends to this day. Um, he lives in Chicago. I live in Mishawaka, Indiana. Um, so we're not terribly far from each other, but it's been years since we've seen each other. But that was great. And it's always going to be a cherished moment in my life. I also started doing drag and this was a game changer for me. Dressing up as a woman and performing as a woman, it was the next best thing to acting. and. Well, I had a lot of fun doing it. I wasn't embraced by the drag community. Uh, for whatever reason, I have no idea. But man, oh man, was that just absolutely freeing. To express myself in a way that was true and and honest with who I am. And I suppose maybe I could have come out as trans then, but I just wasn't ready for that move. I wasn't ready by any means. And I had just come out of the closet as a gay man that was enough trauma for my family, <laughs> although they'd been really, really accepting. Eventually, I stopped doing drag, and just because I didn't feel that I belonged in the culture, and that's because a lot of the local drag queens just dismissed me. So I gave that up except for on Halloween. Halloween was a time for me to dress up in drag and I mostly chose pop culture uh, characters. Um, and eventually I started working at the gay bar and one year we did this 
massive Halloween party with a Wizard of Oz theme. And I, of course, had to be Dorothy. <laughs> and that was a lot of fun. I was able to create this great big mural that went along the main wall of the bar and create some other artwork that would be put throughout the bar. And it was a good night. It was lots of fun. I had a really good time with that. I have over 300 physical media copies of films in my collection. It's one of the proudest things that I own. So eventually I moved down to South Bend, Indiana, which is adjacent to where I live now, for a relationship and I worked for Applebee's and met some amazing people and and it was really nothing but a party. Uh, lots of drinking, uh, lots of staying out late, um, and lots of karaoke. Um, that was a bit of an obsession for me and a lot of the friends that I made were big into karaoke as well so every weekend it was Friday Saturday karaoke blitz lots of beer lots of shots lots of inappropriate behavior <laughs> um, and it got to the point where I was just kind of itching to do some acting. And considering my love of film, I decided to embark on making a film. And I had never done such a thing before. And So I took to writing the script, and it was going to be about fraternal twins, male and female, and their struggles with mental health and childhood abuse, and it was very, very dark. <laughs> um, but I got to relish in playing the female sister. Um, I also played the male brother. And I remember giving the female sister, whose name was Janie, um, I remember giving her criminal fashion sense, which was integral to part of the plot. And I loved spending my time being Jamie. It was so much fun and I got some amazing talent to help me out and be a part of the, the movie and the process. And it was great. It's certainly not a good movie by any means, but it's... It definitely was one of the hallmarks of my life. going to be, but Janice did invite someone over for me to meet. It was wonderful. God, it's been so long since I've kissed a boy, I actually forgot what it was like. It's time to... Boring. Maybe 
Maybe you should go talk to Dr. Goodacre. You need a break from all of this, June. I mean, you're taking care of Janie on a limited income. You're going to school, and you're working, and you don't have any time for yourself. Well, Blake is one of my dearest friends, but he is a man. And giving him the benefit of the doubt, maybe he really is busy. Tell me about the abuse your father, Shane, inflicted on you, Janie, and your mother. What did I tell you about letting strangers into the apartment? Um, how about we watch a movie? Blake left you not on the fridge. He won't return my calls, he won't answer his phone, and I gave him my EVERYTHING! He is a lot of fun, but I really wasn't looking for anything serious with him. Where's Jim? No, 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 Janie, 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 no, no. Eventually, my relationship would end, and it turned out that I really kind of needed to move back to Kalamazoo um, for various reasons. And I spent a good many years of my 30s just feeling lost and... I tried relationship after relationship and it just wasn't happening. And about this time, I um, started getting into YouTube and I would do movie reviews and karaoke videos. And it was a really good creative outlet for me. And I wanted to broaden my horizons. And so eventually Red and Slim Productions was created back in 2016. Um, and it was a way for me to start working on projects that I wanted to create and I also embarked on attempting to make a second amateur film called In My Arms Tonight 
and I acquired some amazing talent for this movie. Uh, some people from across the state and it was going to be my masterpiece. What's the last thing you remember? Driving. You were killed in an auto accident months before South of Hope Falls was released, which was 20 years before I was born. I've got to be dreaming. No, I'm not dreaming. I've just gone batshit crazy. I have gone the way of every artistic genius in the world. I am batshit crazy. What year is this? 2014. Is this still the United States of America? For what it's worth. I've been dead for 50 years. What year were you born? January 12th, 1930. Yes, this is real. I thought you'd be taller. Excuse me? Well, taller. You appear taller on screen. South Fulton Falls. Did it do well? Many believe that it was popular just based on your untimely deaths. Critics thought it was good, hailed you as being brilliant. Mm -hmm. There's even a shrine to you in your hometown. Centerville. Yes. This is so amazing. I can't believe I'm sitting here next to Bobby James. And apparently I don't have any inner monologue right now either. Key. Are you okay? Yeah, why wouldn't I be? Because you look like you've seen a ghost. Yes, I have. Yes! I knew it! It's because we live next to that town in Scottsdale where the, the two twins killed themselves. No, I'm calling ghost no, hunters! No, 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 I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I'm sorry. Damn. I wanted to be on TV. Can you give me a newspaper? Why? Google, dude. Um, no, internet's down at the moment and uh, I really am missing my news. So turn on the TV. I know I want, I want to read. Okay, so you're weird today. Uh, I'm going to get your paper. If you're not better by the time I come back, who are you going to call? You know I mean? oh, okay, all right, got you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Sorry, that was my roommate. Um, he's really not all that bright um, and articulate, but I don't want him to see any of this until I figure out whether or not I'm batshit crazy. Um, or not, so... Okay. And I need to take down anything with your face on it. Is this what typewriters look like now? Um, kind of, sort of. It's a computer, specifically a laptop. It's pretty spectacular when you think about it. Wow, there's a whole world out there you're not even aware of. What are you typing about? Uh, a play. I'm a playwright. I just haven't really written anything more worth a lick yet. Um, I'm having trouble finding my inspiration. Is this all? No, um, no, there's more here. I'll, I'll show you. Basically, what you have to do is move your finger along and move that little, what is it called, cursor still? Um, it's irrelevant, but you move that down to that little arrow thing and then tap on that and that scrolls down the page for you. Hey, Nito, let me try. <laughs> it's nothing great, really. I had these aspirations of making it a modern-day Romeo and Juliet. It's like more like Romeo and Julio and with the, all the death. I want to center it around passion, about a genuine, sincere look at at gay love. Okay. As in happy? No, as in homosexual. I mean, a lot has changed since your time, but I'm sure that you were unfamiliar with that kind of terminology. No. Well, the play is essentially written about a character who is basically me, uh, finding his soulmate and falling in love, and the thing is that I have no experience in that field. I, I don't even know how to write it. 
Well, clearly I'm no expert in your field, but never been in love with a girl. Do you, Madonna, and the Levine Newton John count? Who? Shit, I got it. You and Lydia Montrose. You guys played on-screen lovers in South of Hope Falls, and you guys were rumored to have an off-screen romance. Isn't that true? I mean, maybe, maybe that's why you're here. It's like Xanadu without the music and roller skating muses. Lydia, I never got to say goodbye. If I were of spiritual nature, this would totally defy everything ever taught. This is a sign, a gift of fate, karma finally rewarding me, and you. Lydia Monrose has been sighted here in this city. I am that shit crazy. Hey, put your newspaper on the table. Hey there. Hey. Uh, Stephen, this is, uh, 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 no need to explain. You, you made an internet friend. That's fine. Uh, good, good. Nice to meet you. Uh, please just don't leave a mess like you did the last No, time. it's not anything like that. Hey, dude. Okay. I'm gonna go to my room. Okay. Fine. I'm really sorry about that. I, uh, I would never. You know, this isn't half bad. What? You are good. I've never read anything that seems so real. Scripts I've read don't always sound forest and silly, even south of Hope Falls. I mean, the dialogue was ridiculous. But that's how it was done. I had to get you to fall in love. Okay. Tell you what, I'll help you find that passion you're looking for. And you can help me find Lydia. Yeah, I am batshit crazy, but you know what? If this means winning a Pulitzer, then that's the path I tread. Deal. By the way, did I win any awards? No. Uh, remind me and I'll teach you about the internet. Sadly enough, In My Arms Tonight would fail before it really got off the ground. Um, and it's, it still kind of stings to this day because I really put a lot of effort into the scripts. There are a few people that help me out with it. The talents that I was able to pull together just wowed me and, and yeah, how I wish I could go back and make that better, but I can't. But there is a bright spot, and that was meeting somebody new, and somebody who would challenge me, and I had no idea, excuse me at the time, how great life would be eventually.